Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I will just wait a few more minutes for people to join and I will start. Okay, um, so good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining today for uh, our short webinar on uh, open data and the importance of uh, open data culture. My name is uh, Emeline, I am a project and research officer at uh, Women in Digital Empowerment or WIDE in Luxembourg. Um, we are a partner of the Erasmus Plus project, Public Makers, as well as um, three other organizations. We have CDK Rijeka, a Croatian partner, Interalia, the Greek partner, and uh, Polygonal, our Italian partner and um, technical expert on this, uh, on this topic. Um, this webinar is the first of a series of four webinars to be held um, during the month of March in order to celebrate the uh, Open Data Day, International Open Data uh, this, uh, this event uh, has been created in, um, in order to uh, raise awareness on open data and promote the use of open data. Uh, this year, it will take place takes place in uh, two days, so the 6th of March 2021. Just for your information, um, this uh, webinar is, um, as well as the three others, are going to be recorded uh, and added to our project website, publicmakers.eu. So you can access it and uh, replay it afterwards. Uh, you will not be able to speak during uh, this short webinar, but you have a chat room where you can write your comments, um, exchange ideas, and ask uh, some questions. So, as I said before, uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, hold uh, this intro introductory webinar about um, open data in general and the importance of uh, open data and open data culture. So, um, let's dive into uh, today's topic. First of all, um, I am talking about open data, but what exactly is open data? So to be open, data sets must, ha must have some technical and legal features that uh, enables us to call them open. And according to the Open Data Handbook, uh, we need to define first what, uh, what we mean by open when we talk about um, data. First, we have uh, availability and accessibility, so access. 
data sets should be available entirely and just by a click away. Their format should be uh, convenient and should allow, uh, allow users to edit it also. Open data must be free, free to use, but this doesn't mean that it's always free to access. In uh, some cases, in exceptional cases, a reuse fee may uh, have to be paid, but um, ideally it should not exceed the reasonable cost of reproducing the, the requested unit of uh, such data. Then uh, we have the license. So it means that data should be available under license, which um, lets it to be mixed with other data and allows it to be reusable. So um, this data should be machine readable. That means that it should have formats like PDF, um, ODT, XLS, uh, CSV, um, or even JSON, KLM, or XML format, for example. And um, when possible, open data should come packaged in a various uh, variety of file formats uh, that could cover uh, that will cover as many potential users as uh, possible. <clears throat> then we have the universal participation. So it means that everyone should be free to use, reuse, and redistribute so th this data. So there should be no discrimination against a uh, uh, person or uh, special groups. So, for example, data cannot be restricted in ways such as um, this, data, this open data sets can be used only for educational purposes. No, you cannot discriminate between commercial and non-commercial use. It should have no uh, limitation that prevents it uh, from being used in, um, in any particular uh, way. <clears throat> And then one of the most uh, important feature of uh, open data uh, is the interoperability, which means that the data sets can be combined together um, and uh, used to develop more and better products and services. So you can use two different data sets from two different sources and you have the possibility to combine them together. It's following the format that I've said before. <clears throat> so um, what can be considered as open data? The term open data can be applied to um, information from any source or on any subject. Uh, it can be, for example, um, all the public information regarding uh, transportation, such as maps or bus schedules or uh, number of citizens traveling, etc. Or um, information about the state's investment and budget or EU funding for a new initiative in the city or, the, or region. And it also can be new scientific researches, for example. We can find uh, open information uh, in science, in education, environment, uh, libraries, businesses, design or finance. And the term also applies to data, including big data uh, and content such as uh, images, uh, text or music. On the other, uh, other hand, um, open data never, never, never include any personal information or details about invi individuals. Uh, so, for example, medical records, addresses, passwords. It also never includes proprietary uh, data such as uh, intellectual property or uh, data uh, or um, trade secrets, for example. And uh, finally, it should never contain any uh, sensitive data, such as uh, data that would compromise uh, national security or public safety. Those data sets are not available publicly and cannot be accessed freely. But who can produce open data? So, I mean, everyone can create uh, data. And 
for open data, states, governments, uh, individuals, startups, municipalities, cities, and um, organization or charities can uh, create uh, open data. <clears throat> um, regarding the open data culture, um, it is a cultural shift where open data sets are uh, treated as an essential element of uh, support for um, detecting and solving problems or challenges. Uh, it is also a vector of mediation of uh, economic development and uh, transformation of uh, public action. So why is it so important? First, it is important for public authorities because the public service is encouraged to improve the, the quality of its own data before making it public. And uh, thanks to open data, um, administration are encouraged to look, uh, look outside, look outwards and collaborate more with uh, external uh, partners. And the process of uh, standardizing the, to standardize the, the data to make them open uh, allows for more um, interoperability between uh, the public services. <clears throat> then it is also important for the eco economy because not only because uh, the reuse of public sector information enables to the creation of um, um, new products and services, but also because it enables public services to become more, uh, more efficient. And uh, finally, finally, our um, main focus for today is the use of, um, uh, of open data that um, allows the stimulation of associative and democratic life. So it stimulates the collective intelligence sphere and innovation. So it enables uh, to inform citizens better um, to design new tools to give strength to their uh, democratic and um, social commitment. Open data allows uh, for um, um, new ways of creating dialogue between various stakeholders. It means that uh, access and availability of the government uh, or municipality data, for instance, can allow NGOs or communities or individual citizens to try to find a solution to um, a social problem they, they encounter. Um, as an example, if, uh, if a local NGO or a community would like to, would like the, 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 their city to increase the investment in uh, green technology, it can provide the data set about uh, pollution or budget to support their, their claim. <clears throat> it is also a, a, a part, um, open data is also a part of uh, a solution to, uh, that leads to government's uh, transparency because it allows citizens to uh, investi investigate and uh, research on how uh, the country is shaping the, the initiative, um, what de decisions are um, being made to solve the local or national issues, and also how the money is spent and what investments are planned. They uh, so people can anal analyze uh, policy choices, um, examine uh, facts and develop op opinions. This uh, transparency can uh, impact uh, engagement and uh, participation from the citizens and also provide a good uh, assessment tool for the, um, the, the, the undertaken, the current uh, governmental uh, activities. And as public authorities do not always know uh, what is relevant to the citizen, raw data must also be made available. 
and organization, uh, organizations, citizens, uh, companies can thus generate um, relevant information themselves also and actively participate uh, in the development of a creative solution. Um, yeah, I'm just making a quick pause. <laughs> Much better. So, um, if we talk about open data among youth, uh, which is the main focus of our public maker project, uh, it enables them to uh, collectively learn about and improve services in their city and community. And they also uh, open data also um, allows uh, allow us to to make informed decisions. It is possible for them to uh, consult this data for um, information purposes, but also, and I would say above all, uh, to use applications that allow them to get involved and um, participate actively in the life of, uh, of, of their city, for example. <clears throat> for um, young people, open data can play um, a significant role uh, as it helps to better understand the opportunities uh, available to them. Um, also, it addresses uh, issues within their area of living, but um, also uh, influence the decision maker uh, makers affecting uh, their lives. But. The question is, how can we uh, encourage citizens and especially young people to use open data? So we have uh, our best practice in Luxembourg and now this year uh, worldwide. Uh, so every year since 2017 or 18, uh, Luxembourg has organized a game of code uh, hackathon dedicated to the use uh, of uh, open data to create innovative uh, digital products in, uh, I think it's 36 hours. Uh, and this year, just like, just like last year's, this uh, hackathon will take place online um, for reasons we all know. And uh, it will go international, uh, bringing together developers, students, trainees, uh, junior, senior profiles from all uh, from the entire world. Last year, um, for example, one of the event sponsors proposed a challenge on open data under the topic 2020, the beginning of a new decade, but also a challenging year for humanity. Again, we all know why. Uh, so the team who chose this topic had the to use um, open data sets to create an app or um, a web solution capable of addressing any of the current issues arising from the uh, worldwide uh, health crisis. And the winner team called uh, 2GM won the, the category uh, with uh, an application that estimates traffic in real time uh, anywhere in the world based on open data from social networks, government uh, APIs, uh, etc. And this uh, prototyped app uh, could thus uh, help solve problems related to uh, the current COVID-19 pandemic, such, uh, such as um, maintaining social distances, for example. Um, Events and challenging uh, challenges uh, like these are flourishing uh, all over the world to promote the use and raise awareness uh, of open data. Uh, this is also the scope of the Open Data Day, uh, just dedicated a day to, 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 to raise awareness about open data. And we can see that from since uh, many years, it's becoming uh, a little bit more and more and more important. And uh, for example, in Denmark, uh, a woman created uh, findtoilet.dk, um, which lists all the Danish public toilets. 
This way, uh, for example, people with bladder problem or Crohn's disease can go uh, outside more freely and um, uh, safely, I would say. Also, during last year, EU Dataton, um, a team created a span, uh, created um, uh, data seats. It's a sp uh, Spanish student team. Um, it's so data seats. It's uh, an app that aims to provide uh, SMEs, so small and medium uh, companies, in the field of agriculture with direct access to better and um, more um, detailed information to help them. Uh, become a, a part of the green restructuring uh, of EU um, industry. Uh, so, to sum up, it is clear that uh, open data is the major challenges for um, innovation and uh, also transparency in Europe. And uh, uh, we are very glad that many, many initiatives are being taken in this direction. Um, and with public makers, uh, this is what we do, we wish to do as well. We want to empower um, young people in open data and digital social innovation by uh, supporting them in being more active in social level uh, through digital tools. So we are we have worked and are still working on creating content, uh, courses, training and quizzes for young people and organizations working with uh, young people as well. The screenshot uh, on the presentation is the, 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 the courses we have regarding open data uh, awareness and uh, the, the nice drawings you can see uh, are open badges to get at the end of the, the courses. Okay, so does anyone has any question or wants more information about public makers or talk about open data? Do you have any question for the, for the moment? Otherwise, I will uh, end this webinar. I'm just waiting one minute for you to write down your question if you have some. Okay, no question. So means I've been maybe clear enough. Oh, one question. Cool. Okay, Vanessa. Um, so I invite you to send me uh, an email to um, uh -huh. here. Here is my email. You can send me an email, and I would be very happy to. Um, uh, to have you on board on this project uh, to uh, maybe test our platform and courses and uh, yeah test our uh, our courses uh, on uh, on on a, for example a tr a training with youth people uh, applied to art and culture maybe you will also be interested by a next week webinar um, which is about data visualization and simple visualization. Uh, yeah, so regarding um, RGPD, that's what I explained before. Uh, it should, I mean, there is a, a thin line uh, regarding uh, uh, what is open data and RGPD, but as I said, it should not, any um, uh, open data should not contain any uh, personal information, addresses, passwords. So this is something um, that is quite um, difficult to implement for governments, um, countries, uh, 
even businesses, because there is, as I said, there is this thin line between open data and RGPD, but it is forbidden, completely forbidden to, 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 to uh, give access to um, personal information. Chat. You're welcome, Vanessa. Do we have any other question from the participants? <laughs> You're welcome. So um, you will find the replay of this webinar on uh, the website of Public Makers Project, uh, publicmakers.eu, at the end of the month, because we have three other sessions, as, as I said, um, with our three other partners. And um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, coming today. And I uh, will probably see you next week. Uh, um, the Thursday, 11th of uh, March at 2 p.m. with our Croatian partner, uh, CTK Rijeka, for a webinar on data visualization and um, simple visualization on Cadva.com. And yeah, don't forget to check out and like our Facebook page for more content uh, on open data and uh, on our projects for youth. Uh, we will also have two other uh, um, uh, webinars on the, the 18th and the 26th about crowd, uh, crowdsourcing and Mapathon. And the last one will be on uh, advocacy online. So, yeah, I hope to see you uh, uh, next week and the other, uh, during the other webinars. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.